Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create a liquid simulation in Maya 2018. Now you can follow along in previous versions of Maya as well, just make sure that you have Bifrost installed. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Alright, so here we are in Maya 2018 and as I mentioned before you can use a previous version as well, just make sure that you have Bifrost installed. If you go to the FX panel or the FX tab you will see Bifrost fluids here at the top. So just make sure you have that and then you can follow along. So before we start we're going to just set up some options or some settings. So here on your timeline at the bottom, just right click on that. Go to playback speed and make sure this is set to play every frame max real time. You can also use play every frame free, but I prefer this one because then it won't play faster than real time. So that's a good one. And uh, then we're going to go up to Bifrost fluids, go to Bifrost options. And uh, yeah, I want to enable scratch caching. Now that will just create a cache into memory or into your RAM. And it's just nice to uh, basically preview your simulation with that ticked. Alright, so we're going to close that and then we're going to go to the modeling tab. So just here at the top, set it to modeling and this is where we're going to create our container and also our geometry that's going to be the emitter for the fluid simulation. So I'm going to go to poly modeling and then I'm going to create a box, something like that. And then I'm going to scale it up by using R. So just scale it up something like, like that. Just give it some height. And I'm going to move it up so it's just above the uh, the grid. And I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to right click on this. And uh, then I'm going to select face. And then I'm going to select this top face. And uh, then I'm going to go to edit mesh. Go to extrude. And uh, then I'm going to change the offset. So just bring that in slightly like that. And then I'm going to go back with that same face selected. I'm going to go back to edit mesh and then click on extrude again. And then I'm just going to move it down. So just on this arrow just move it down so you've got some something like a container. Alright, then we're going to right click on this face again, go to object mode, so we're back in uh, object mode. And I'm just going to zoom out here again, and uh, then I'm going to create my emitter, or the geometry that's going to be the emitter. So under poly modeling, I'm going to create a simple sphere, and uh, then I'm just going to move it up. And then I'm going to scale it down, so pressing R and then scaling it down like that, that should be good enough. Alright, now we're going to go into our FX panel, or the FX tab, so click on modeling here at the top and set this to FX. And now we're going to create our fluid simulation. So first select your emitter. So I'm going to select the sphere. And uh, then I'm going to go up to Bifrost fluids and then click on liquid. And that will automatically create the emitter and the, the fluid container and all of those things. And now if you click play, it will actually start the simulation. You'll see some little blue dots, really small. They're going to fall down and they're going to fall right through the container. So that's not really what we want. So we're going to stop that and then go back to the first frame. Alright, so with your Bifrost Liquid 1 selected, we're going to change the point size to 3. And this is just so we can see the fluid better. So if you play this back now, you'll see that those little dots are slightly bigger, just easier to see them. It won't change anything with your simulation or anything to do with your simulation. It's just the way it's displayed in the viewport. Alright, so we're going to go back to the first frame. And then we're going to click on the emitter, the Bifrost Emitter Props 1. And we're going to set the continuous emission. Alright, and what this will do is if you play it back now, you'll see it will emit continuously from that geometry. Now it's still falling right through our container, so we're going to stop that, go back to the first frame. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select our Bifrost Liquid 1, and we're going to hold in Shift, and then we're going to select our geometry, the container. And uh, then we're going to go up to Bifrost Fluids, and we're going to click on Collider. Alright, so this is going to tell the Bifrost uh, simulation that this container will actually be a collider. And uh, if we play this back now, you will see the liquid will start falling from our emitter. And it's actually going to interact with our uh, container, which is pretty cool. You can't really see it here because the resolution is very low of the simulation. So I'm going to stop that. And now if you scrub through here, you can see it's actually caching it. So it's nice and fast. And uh, let's do a quick preview render. So I'm just going to simulate this again. And I'm going to press stop and I'm going to zoom in slightly like this. Alright, so first we need to add a light to our scene because we won't be able to see anything because there's no lights. So I go to Arnold and then I'm just going to create a area light. Okay, and I'm going to move that up and I'm going to move it to the side and I'm going to make it bigger. So scale it up and I'm going to rotate it slightly and I'm going to set the exposure to about 8 and let's click on Arnold and render. 
All right, you can see we've got something here that looks like liquid. Obviously, it's really low resolution. So I'm going to close that down. And uh, then I'm going to just increase the resolution of our simulation. So really easy to do. We're going to go to the Bifrost Liquid Properties 1. And then you'll see your master voxel size under resolution. Now, the smaller this number, the better the resolution. It's actually the size of those voxels or those uh, particles. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.2, press enter, and then go back to the first frame, click on play to restart the simulation. And you can see it's a lot more dense. It's looking good. And it's going to interact with our container now. There we go. And then we're going to press stop, or you can press escape on the keyboard. And uh, let's zoom in here and see how this looks like. Alright, so I'm going to click on Arnold and then Render. There we go. You can see it's much smoother and it's a little bit more realistic. Still low resolution, but it's, it's looking nice. And I'm going to show you guys quickly how to change the material of this liquid. Let's say you want a different color. Really easy to do with uh, the new version of Maya. So you can just open your Hypershade and you will see there is a new AI standard. I'm just going to click on that and it's going to bring it up in this Render Viewport. And uh, you can also rename this just to make it a bit easier. I'm going to call this liquid. And a really easy way to change the color is if you go down here and you go to coat. And uh, then you click on the color. So let's set this to, let's set it to like a shocking green. And then you just increase the weight. So I'm just going to increase this all the way to one. And let's close that down. And uh, let's do a new preview render. So I'm going to click on Arnold render. And there you go. Nice and green slimy liquid all right so let's close this down again and uh, i'm going to try and increase the uh, resolution even more so i'm going to go back to the first frame click on our bifrost liquid properties and i'm going to set the resolution to 0.15 remember the smaller the number the better the resolution so i'm going to press play again to start the simulation all right and i'm going to press stop to stop the simulation and let's do a quick render preview all right, there you can see it's starting to look really nice now. So let's say you are now happy with your simulation and you actually want to write the cache to your disk. So let me show you how to do this. So I'm only going to do about 50 frames. So I'm going to set my frame range here at the bottom to 50 and make sure this one is on 50 as well. So the maximum frame is 50. And you can also see that it's caching to memory at the bottom. It's actually turning your timeline green means it is cached to RAM. So now we want to cache it to our hard drive. So I'm going to go back to the first frame. And uh, what you need to do is you're going to go to Bifrost Fluids. And uh, then we're going to use this Compute and Cache to Disk. But first you need to select the Bifrost uh, container to tell it to actually write this uh, simulation to disk. So I'm going to click on this Bifrost Liquid 1, this box around our emitter. And with that selected, I'm going to go to Bifrost Fluids. Go to Compute and Cache to Disk. Click on the little box next to it. And um, yeah, I'm going to select, you can actually change if you want to cache which elements. So I'm just going to do the simulation and you can also set the frame range from 1 to 50. That's perfect. You can also set your cache directory. I'm just going to use the default for now. And uh, then I'm going to click on create. And then it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite the cache because I've got some cache elements in that folder already. And uh, I'm just going to click on replace existing. And uh, then it's going to load some time. It doesn't really give you an indication of how far it is but just give it some time here at the bottom you can see that it's actually running so let it just run for a couple of seconds or it depends on the duration or the length of your simulation and obviously also the resolution of your simulation so it can take a lot of time you can also go to that cache folder and you can see the frames being created and uh, then you can get an indication of how long it will take to finish okay that's done so now if we play through this you'll see that it's actually playing it nice and fast because it's cached to the hard drive and uh, now I can obviously render it out. So let's just do a quick render preview, Arnold render. And yeah, you can see the liquid is looking really nice. Obviously, if you're very happy with your simulation, you can bring the resolution or the size of the voxels even down further to like 0.05. Your resolution will obviously impact the time it takes to run the simulation. So the smaller you make it, the longer it will take to finish the simulation. And that's how easy it is to create a liquid simulation in Maya using Bifrost. Really cool stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Give me a thumbs up if you did and also click on that subscribe button if you want to see new tutorials. I upload new visual effects and motion graphics tutorials every week. So yeah, you get to see new tutorials and it also helps me a lot. So please click on that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Cheers. Bye.